What's going on, y'all, man? Welcome or welcome back to the Broken Traditions Podcast. In this episode, I want to talk about how me, Laron, a descendant of slavery, is conflicted when it comes to reparations for slavery. These are raw emotions. Um, this is just me putting this out there. So if it don't flow right, please forgive me. But I want to discuss how I am now conflicted when it comes to reparations. And the reason why this is interesting for me being conflicted of reparations is because I am a descendant of slavery, right? My great, great grandmother was a slave. So that means my great, great, great grandparents were slaves and my great, 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 great grandparents were slaves, right? So I am a descendant of slavery. I am very conflicted when it comes to reparations. Now, one thing I ask of you guys, if you guys see this video, click this video before you come into the comments and agree, disagree, um, upset with me, call me all types of names. Listen to what I have to say first, right? That's one thing I ask of you. Listen to what I have to say first, right? I know social media is more of see a headline, leave a comment without real context on what was said. So listen to what I have to say, right? Another thing I want to say too, man, usually on my podcast, I would uh, shout out a company that I am partnered with and tell you guys support that company. I'm not doing that because of the the, how controversial this episode could be, right? If you guys want to support the companies that support me, I'll leave links in the description below. You guys can support them. Also, if you want to support me directly, one, you can become a channel member on my YouTube or you can become a member of my Patreon. I'll leave links in the description for that as well. And for those who are channel members of the YouTube and Patreon, I greatly appreciate you guys' support. Your support is helping me keep the lights on and helping Broken Tradition stay independent. I'm not trying to sign no uh daily wire type of thing or no uh root gringo type of thing i want to stay independent and your support is helping me stay independent i greatly appreciate you guys for channel members and patreon members you guys get to see this content early so that's my gift to you guys so somebody who was a, de a descendant of slaves now feels conflicted about reparations there are so many reasons or how I came to this co confliction, right? Conflict. Um, first and foremost, I want to say that, you know, as a descendant of slavery, I think I am owed reparations, right? Reparations were paid to Japanese. Reparations were paid to Jews. Reparations were paid to a lot of other groups in this country for wrongdoings some wrongdoings not even in this country people getting paid out for reparations so on that notion right on that fact descendants of slaves are old reparations before i get into why i'm conflicted about this man i might make this a an ongoing conversation either online or offline if you guys have opinions about this leave something in the comments after you listen to what i have to say also if you guys listen to this on apple spotify um wherever you listen to your podcast email me email me at laron at broken and we can have a conversation about this right and perhaps i could do a live stream on my youtube where i could invite guests in either you want to call in or you could cam in and we can have a conversation about this. And I want to get your thoughts and your opinions. And I don't want this conversation just to be uh, only for like people that are pro reparations. I want to hear people that are anti reparations and why you feel that way. So if you guys want to have that conversation online and have that conversation online respectfully, right? Respectfully, let me know in the comments. Let me know via email if we should have this conversation and perhaps on a later date we could have a live stream on youtube about this right so my conflicts with reparations it's becoming a long list 
of why I'm conflicted by it. And I can't be the only person who's conflicted by this, especially somebody that's a descendant, a descendant of a slave. First reason why I'm being conflicted by this is because the carrot in front of the donkey. And what I mean by that is this, the carrot in front of the donkey. This is a tactic I'm starting to realize is being done by politicians when they need black support. What they do is they do a study on reparations. And I see this in California. Uh, I see this in New York. Um, I just did a video about Mayor Brandon Johnson now announced a reparation studies during the week of Juneteenth. And the studies don't come to a don't come to a result of reparations. And it's false promises that politicians are starting to do just to get your support, just to get your hopes up to say that, hey, Mr. Black man, Miss Black woman, if you vote for us, there's a good chance that you can get reparations. I'm starting to believe that these studies are a joke. And the reason why I believe that these studies are a joke because what happened in Illinois, there's a town in Illinois that started to pay out payments to descendants of people who were uh, systematically racially profiled on housing, right? And this town admitted their wrongs. This town also said, you know what? We're going to pay people who prove that they were a part of this $25,000, right? $25,000, in my opinion, is a drop in the bucket when it comes to reparations, but that's a step, right? They said they're going to do it. Now, from their study, from their uh, analysis, they came to this conclusion. But now, in writing, they put out these payments are only for Black people. The reason why that's problematic is because now, constitutionally, that's not allowed. You cannot do something constitutionally and make it for one race. So, of course, people who are anti and reparations are going to have a problem with that. Now that we have a conservative group that realize this is problematic in what they do, this conservative group now filed a lawsuit against this town because the writing in this statement is these payments only for black people. If you got all these scholars, you got all these folks who are doing these studies, how come the language and the verbiage is so sloppy for somebody to find that loophole that easily? Are these studies being done just to pacify black people? And when it comes to descending to slavery, it could be anybody. I gave the example of perhaps um, just the family lineage of a Patrick Mahomes children who look on face value like white kids, but their grandfather is African-American. So if reparations fall into that lineage and that and their grandfather, Patrick Mahomes Sr. was a descendant of slaves, now they can't get reparations because of their skin color. So since your verbiage is so sloppy, there's loopholes. I feel like y'all doing this intentionally because you're not willing to pay out reparations. That's a conflict for me. That's a conflict for me because now you're playing games in our face. Another conflict I'm noticing. Tulsa, Oklahoma just announced they're not going to pay the survivors of the Tulsa, Oklahoma race riot. This is something that was documented. This is something that is... That is a known fact that happened. And there are people who survived that and are still alive to this day when I'm recording this video. And those people are not owed reparations. 
when it comes to these studies and come to these decisions, what loopholes are these people who are doing the studies leaving out? Is it by mistake or is it intentional? I'm going to tell you straight up and down. I'm starting to think that this is intentional because this country cannot pay out reparations. They cannot do it. And that goes to my second reason why I feel reparations is, is a conflict for me. How would this payout look like? Now, say the studies come back and say descendants of slaves, each person who's a descendant of a slave, right, is owed to say us, say 75 grand, right? 75 grand is owed to each descendant of slavery, right? That's not just me. That's also my son. That's also my mother. You feel me? So, and also, does that work for both sides of the family? So, say, I mean, it, it could go that deep, right? It could go that deep. So, if my mother's side of the family is descended of slavery or has slavery in the lineage, and my father's side of the family has slavery in the lineage, do I get two payouts? Now, if my son, both of my parents are descended of slaves, both of his parents are are descended of slaves is that four payouts how does that work how, does that make sense so me being a logical person it doesn't it doesn't make sense then now say you know that's the their way of paying out right 75 grand i just put that ballpark number out there so now say both both my parents are descendants of slaves do i get 150 grand now if that's the case, right? 75, 150 grand paid out to each descendant of slave. What is that going to be worth after the inflation? Printing all that money, giving out all that money to each descendant of slave. What does that really mean? What is that $75,000 going to be worth? Is it going to be worth 75 grand or is it going to be worth 750 after inflation? Are you willing to take $75,000 for a government to say, we're sorry for slavery, and now your job that pays you, say, 60 grand a year, is now you can't live on your own across this country? Is that something you're willing to take? Those are conversations that we have to have. Those are things that I'm conflicted with. Am I willing to take a, a payment from the government and now I know that this payment could potentially crash the economy and what does that money mean we're already paying out Ukraine we're already paying out Israel we're already paying out to all these different we already putting all this money into migrants coming into the country we already getting hit with crazy inflation so you get 75 grand, right? Just a ballpark number. You get 75 grand. You can't even get your own house. You can't even probably buy a car. Everything is going to go up. What does that mean? What is that? Is that worth it to you? I'm conflicted by that. Another thing I'm conflicted by is people who are taking reparations and using it for their own personal gain for to become oh to become popular on social media and using that to make money i'm gonna just give one example but there's plenty of examples out there right Tariq nasheed is this something that's a genuine thing that he wants to get or is this a grift that he's doing to promote himself and get more money for himself you feel me so when I see a reparations uh, meetup, when I see a reparations march, when I see these things that is uh, uh, get, get, getting some money, money, right? This is American. This is America. If he feels that he could do that, I'm not mad at him from doing that. But the conflict that comes to be is who's the people that's representing reparations? I'm conflicted by that. I'm conflicted by that because I understand people could grab onto something and take it to a whole nother level 
and get no results out of it, but they could, they could get paid from it. It's the same thing, off subject, on subject, like the people who are saying that, oh, C Caitlin Clark is getting beat up in the WNBA because she's white. There's no proof of that, but you can say that and build up a fan base and build up an audience of people who feel that same way. It's the same thing with reparations, same thing with any niche subject of things that you want to talk about. That's a conflict for me. That's a conflict for me. I really feel like when it comes to reparations, they playing in our faces in 4K. I don't think this government wants to pay out reparations, but they will put something out there saying that they would just to stay in power, right? Brandon Johnson, that's the last example I gave. What this man did with the migrants in Chicago, he has no more support from the black voters, right? Collectively in Chicago. Since he don't have support no more, let me throw out a study for reparations. So now black voters could feel, hey, perhaps I could get a payout if I vote for this man. Playing in your faces. Playing in your faces in 4K. Same thing with Kathy Hochul. Same thing with uh, Gavin Newsom. Playing in your faces because they're not giving you anything of tangibles, but they'll give you that feel-good pill of, hey, look, we're doing this for you. We're Perhaps we're going to pay you. But then when the payments start coming out, here's this goofy-ass loophole that they put into it to make sure that somebody could uh, conflict it. And I, I'll be honest, man. I'm skeptic of all of this shit now. If you see somebody who's saying, all right, reparations, it's getting paid out. Here's our study. The study have this loophole in it. I think that loophole is being fed to conservative groups to start these lawsuits. I think those loopholes are fed to them because they don't want to pay reparations. So if the government not going to pay reparations, is this something that we should continue to fight for? That's a conflict I'm having as well. I see the writing on the wall. I see the bullshit that they pull it in front of our eyes. I see that these folks are pulling us along for the ride. They're not trying to solve this issue. This issue is something that's going to continuously be a carrot in front of us. Unfortunately, with reparations, we are so long gone from slavery. There is no logical payout that makes sense in my eyes. Let me know if you think there's a logical payout. Let me know if there's a logical way of reparations being um, done properly in this country. I don't see it. And that's why I'm conflicted. Yeah, I feel like I deserve it. But me being a logical person, me looking at what I'm looking at, I don't see it. And for me not seeing it, what I could definitively say is this is a game that they're playing. I feel like this is a game that they're playing. Are you prepared to go along for this ride of this game that's being played by these politicians? Are you willing to go along for this ride of these politicians telling you bullshit of, yeah, we're going to do more studies of reparations? There were not studies of giving all this money to Ukraine. There was not studies of giving all this money to Israel. There was not studies to giving all this money to the migrants coming to the border. There were not studies. But there are studies when it comes to reparations. How come there are all these studies all across the nation? How come when these studies are going on, there's not, say, California and New York coming together to come up with a solution? How come when there is a study and there is a solution for something as small as 25 grand, there's loopholes? There's loopholes that could be combated. I'm not comfortable with that. I feel like this is a game that they're playing with us. I feel like this is a game that's being played time and time again by these politicians.
reparations became feel good. It became feel good conversations from politicians that's running bullshit as campaigns, that's running bullshit as administrations that can't give you anything. That's what reparations became. And I'm conflicted that I want to be associated with that. I'm totally conflicted. It doesn't make sense to me. And I hear people saying that if you're not about reparations, you're not getting my vote. You have that right. But at the same time, I think these politicians who are about reparations are playing in your face at the same time. To me, as a voter, as somebody that's independent who vote, who don't care about your D or your R next to your name, and who cares about your policies that is beneficial to my lifestyle and to my family, I feel like a politician that's saying, hey, I'm about reparations, they don't have a plan to give you reparations. How come people do not understand that they're, they're playing in your face? What politician has laid out a foundational groundwork or laid out a, found, a foundational plan that makes sense for reparations? I, let me know. Let me know in the comments. That's found, that is a plan, that is a sound plan that makes sense. This has just became the new buzzword to get black folks hype. And a lot of folks are making a lot of money off of this. That is conflicted to me. That is a disrespect to my ancestors that this is being played in front of me. I can't stand it. I can't stand it. And if that's the case, if that's what y'all going to do, I don't want it. That's where I'm at with it. If that's where y'all going to be, playing in faces, disrespecting ancestors, disrespecting what my ancestors went through during slavery, during reconstruction, during Jim Crow. What, what they went through for me to be here in this country and y'all gonna keep playing in my faces time and time again. I'm no longer accepting that. I'm no longer accepting it. Y'all don't have a plan. Y'all have studies after studies after studies for reparations after the death of George Floyd. Let's be clear. That's what it is. It's just that pacifier that you put into black voters to keep them at bay so they can keep continuously blindly voting for you. I am totally conflicted by this because I know what my ancestors went through and I know the sacrifices and the terror that they went through in this country. But at the same time, I feel so disrespected by these conversations. I feel so disrespected by the stupid ass loopholes that is put in the place of these studies of these people that's supposed to be at the highest level of coming together and figure things out that y'all, y'all, y'all not doing the, the, the proper QA work of going over these documents and crossing your T's and dotting your I's. People get fired for less at jobs that's paying 40 grand. But you're disrespecting me and my ancestors with these goofy ass studies. You're disrespecting me and my ancestors with these false promises that you know you're not giving up. Just say it, rip the bandaid off, say you're not paying, say you're not doing it. Let's move on. Let's move on because we know what y'all about. I really can't stand this. I cannot stand this. It pisses me off. The more and more I look into it, the more and more conversations I have, the more and more videos I do about reparations, it pisses me off knowing that this is what y'all put in front of us. This is more of a slap in the face of anything. I don't want to be pacified. I don't want to be coddled. I don't want to be uh, dealt with kit gloves about things. Be real so we can move forward. 
if you're a politician, run on your policies. Don't run on false promises. And people ask me why you don't want to vote in certain in certain elections. For what? For these goofballs? For these dickheads? I'm not with it. I don't care what color skin is it, the skin you are. I don't care what's in front of your name. I don't care if it's a DRR. I'm not with it. Y'all goofballs. Goofballs are dickheads. That is not providing real solutions. That is disrespecting the, the lineage of slavery. I'm not with it, y'all. I'm sorry. I'm not with it. <sighs> Let me know how y'all feel about this in the comments, man. Or email me, Laurent at brokentraditions.com. Let's have a conversation, man. And like I said, if you guys want to continue this conversation respectfully, let me know via email. Let me know via, uh, uh, you know, comments. If we should continue this conversation, I want to hear what you guys think about this, man. I can't be the only person conflicted by reparations. I can't be the only person that is seeing what's being done by these dickheads and understanding that everybody's eating off of the slavery, off of my lineage, just off of false promises. Let me know how y'all feel about this in the comments, man. Also, check out my website, brokentraditions.com. There you can find uh, my merch. You can find blogs. Also, you can sign up for my newsletter. And in my newsletter, I could directly contact you guys. So instead of me waiting for algorithms to let you know what I'm putting out, I could let you know what I'm putting out. You know what I'm saying? So appreciate y'all. Appreciate y'all for listening. Like I said, listen to the whole conversation and let me know how you feel about this. I don't want to just see something you see clickbait or whatever it is. You get triggered. We have to be adults when it comes to these conversations, man. And I welcome to all comments, loans are respectful. I don't care if you're white, black, Puerto Rican, Haitian. Oh, I forgot what rapper said that. I think it was a uh, Fife Dog. But I don't care what's your skin color, what's your what your ident your identity is, or whatever. Let's have a conversation because I'm tired of these games. I'm tired of them. All right, man. Till next time, peace. Real rap. Ron is signing off. All right, later. One.